my name is Leon Boerta. I am the chairman of the Elite Series here in New Zealand. I am originally from uh, South Africa, but now residing in Christchurch, down in Infocargill for uh, the Southern Smash. Uh, this is a company that we formed about six years ago to expressly promote uh, access to disc golf equipment, um, discs in particular, which was not freely available in New Zealand at the time. The Elite Series, the focus is not so much on having elite players for New Zealand, but more about having an Elite Series so that players knew that the competitions were of the highest level, that the facilities would be top notch, that the organisation would be there, prizes would be worth playing for and the likes. And primarily that is, that is how uh, the Elite Series came about and, and why it was formed. just want to run top level tournaments and that's what New Zealand Elite Series is doing. They're running top level tournaments and uh, I, I mentored a lot of TDs around the country as well and then they contacted me and asked me to be part of the New Zealand Elite Series Collective which is a group of the, the top guys doing it and just kind of fight, found, felt like the right thing to do and I just wanted to continue the mentoring of the, of the tournament directors around the country because I can't run every tournament so I want to pass on my knowledge and I want to help these tournament directors not make the mistakes that I've made over the years and had to learn from. I just want to say to them, well, here's, how, here's how I've done it in the past and, and learnt from and they can just make their job easier because running tournaments is not easy. Hello everybody, my name's Hayden Shaw. I am a tournament director here in New Zealand. Um, I've been running tournaments since 2013, so I'm in my 11th year running tournaments. I'm from the other side of New Zealand. I'm down here in Invercargill running a tournament. I was blessed to have them offer me a, a tournament director role way down in the bottom of the south. I'm from almost the opposite side of the country, so it was pretty cool. It was pretty exciting to get, to get asked to come down. We sponsor um, a fairly good sized team. Mostly our players, if not all of them, are just genuinely good, decent human beings. They are, they are amazing guys, they have a passion for the sport. You've met Johnny, you've seen Bray. Um, these are guys that, that, that stop at nothing to, to give the, the player the best experience possible. DSS is like a really great small team of um, people all with the same mindset. Um, we all feed off each other and help each other out whether it's in life or in disc golf. Innova looks after us with you know, everything we need from discs all the way through to bags and uh, clothing to get us through the year, which is awesome. And they've got a great uh, community as well where you can talk uh, amongst all the team players from here and in the States. So you know, from, from me down here all the way up to Calvin Heimberg in, in the States, we've got that whole group. So yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I can, I can tell you who I am. I'm Bray Marsden. Running this tournament for five years now, um, or helping run it with Johnny and the Disc Golf South crew. Disc Golf South was a Facebook page we started and just people came on board as they knew about the sport and it grew really, really quickly from six or seven years ago. Yeah, my name's uh, Johnny Ferrari and I am the president of Disc Golf South in Invercargill. And uh, Bray is my right hand man and um, we had got this thing going from day dot down here when we didn't have any disc golf in Invercargill and got the thing going and grown it to what it is today, pretty much, yeah. We do this mainly out of love with what we do for now with the job, like we spend a lot of time doing it, like hours, hundreds of hours, just because we love to do it. It's not like about getting paid for us, it's more about just keep building it for the people, you know, like it's an amazing sport right through from the people that have mental health problems to little kids walking with families to the people that want to be competitive. Like, it's just, and, it, and everyone tells someone else about it and it just grows and we just would like to keep pumping that level up, you know, and, and make sure everyone knows what disc golf is. So how is that not broken yet? It just landed on rock. It is just still right there, right? Yes. How about you throw it harder and actually hit it? We make you make sure to put this part in. Leave just still there. <laughs> oh. ah. So up higher, almost. Uh, yeah, a fraction higher, but left rather than right. Oh. That's on top of it. It was on there. <laughs> no, it's slippery. <laughs> that one there. Woo! 
Ethan and, and Levi, I was out putting in course signage in the first course that we we short course in the park, and they came up to me and they'd been playing a wee bit in Tiano up the road and they see me and I must have thrown a shot or something practicing and they were like, whoa, you know, like, and they thought I was really good at the time and just to watch him go from this little kid right through just playing and feeding off his brother and they got better and better and better and now they're just like, oh, leaving me in the dust. It's quite good to see that, the growth of them. I'm definitely more comfortable on the golf courses, okay. but I enjoy woods, woods golf and some techier shots more. Because on the golf course it just turns into who can throw the best hyzers. Um, it can be challenging if you get the course design right, but generally speaking I probably prefer more wooded courses. Okay, okay, okay. But I play good on golf courses, so, you know. There's, it's only three tournaments a year, you can't, they, they, uh, that is good and stuff, but you can't assist that is the entire tournament scene. Yeah. Um, like, so most tournaments actually wouldn't pay out. Like, you know, they, they, you get you might get tournament discs, like you definitely get um, a, a good time and all this, but you weren't necessarily, if you won, guaranteed uh, money, which, uh, you know, has, has obviously changed and gotten more consistent, yeah. which, which is good. Um, and it's a draw card, it gets people wanting to travel a bit more because they might actually make, like I say, you know, they might, might, might make the money back at least, plus obviously winning and the, um, what's the word, but, you know, the kickbacks and the fun of it, yes, of exactly. playing, like, but yeah, most people are in it for the love of it at this stage rather than the money. For sure, yeah, rather Which, than the money, for sure, you know. Um, but just to start. I'm proud, I'm proud of all the club members down here, like, they're, they're just such a good bunch of guys, they just all get on so well, they travel, not like just that, like, they, the people that play, from 83 year old Monty to like the young people that are starting to come out with the families and then the clubs getting these guys that are just coming through at the level and they're practicing and getting to the point where they're really contendable and like playing all the tournaments in New Zealand and, and like they just keep popping up this next bit of talent that come from the south and we're yeah I'm super stoked with like the talent and, and how the guys down here have evolved through the sport from short space of time really. You can't be mad at each other. I like that. I'm very like this. I think you're still mad about twice or two years ago, though. We're going to start draining pots. I definitely said a couple naughty words last year. I missed, a sh I missed a short putt on 18 to tie you. Okay. And I end up in a tie with him. Uh, I remember that. Yeah, thank you. No, 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 like, I remember it very clearly, <laughs> you know. I don't know many people, like, just from my friends or school, I don't know many people that haven't tried it. Yeah. So, like, just talking about people who have tried it, it's like half the population of Invercargill, I reckon. Oh, okay. It's like, yeah. everyone that you talk to is like, oh, oh, you play that disco. Yeah, they might you know, not like it, but they at least know, yeah. they go, oh, I've played in the park. How many people live in Invercargill? Uh, 55, 50, 50, 55,000. Ah, where? Do that one. Whoop! What? Did you see Not do that. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, Invercargill, if, for those watching on, Invercargill is a bit of a disc golf paradise. You'll see the videos um, from the Southern Smash through NVG Media, obviously, and what you don't see is all the lines that they didn't use for the other amazing disc golf holes that even just this park alone. So uh, tomorrow before I fly out, I'm actually Johnny Ferrari, who's Disc Golf South, um, it's kind of main guy. Him and I are actually going to check out another location, and then he's told me there's another location, and then another location coming up. So the scene down here is about to explode. The, um, the current course um, that you see on camera isn't the, what's built the sport, but it's what, um, yeah, there's just so much growth down here. And with the ILT funding, so ILT is the licensing body down here, and they just give so much money. So it's just really easy for it to uh, progress as a sport down here. So in terms of growth, um, maybe I'll get us back next year. We had nationals down here last year. We had 250 people, and that was quite big for the, for the sport and the club and the, and the city down here with, you know, 50 people coming from overseas and 
whatnot, and using the accommodation and the hospitality, and oh, that was really good. Why disc golf? Okay, um, that's a hard one. I mean, it's just, I guess, a lot of disc golfers have this addictive nature behind them, and then disc golf is such a positive thing in so many ways. You've got outdoor sports, you've got um, its energy, you've got when it hits the chains from that outside and and you get that buzz, that those pheromones, that, you know, not pheromones, the endorphins that run through your body and I don't know man. This is not only a club that is behind disc golf but this entire town, you know, anywhere we go in this town after hours and they look at us and they go, oh are you here for the tournament? Everybody knows and it's a fairly decent sized town so it's not very small. People just walk in the park and they stop and they look and they go, what is this, you know, like, and they come and talk to you and, and before you know it, you're giving them a disc out of your bag so they can come and experience it. And, and just to see them back another day, you know, just throwing with their grandchild or, or the rest of their family, for me, it's, it's so good to see. The disc golf community, I guess for me, like, I went over, been overseas a few times and they just, so, it, people just embrace you and they just bring you into the community and I've never had that before, so um, there's a lot of things disc golf, it's hard to explain. It's addictive as fuck. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's it, it's hard to explain, but it's not hard to explain at the same time. Disc golf is disc golf. We all know it. <laughs>